I think one of the things that's important to do when you're thinking about how you can be proactive uh, as a younger potential board member is to think about uh, what you have to offer. Yes, there, there are challenges if, if you're thinking about some organizations, but I, I would try and flip that and think about uh, the advantages and, and special uh, things that you have to offer as a, as a potential board member. And, and I think the, the key word is about fit. So what might be viewed as a challenge with a larger, more sophisticated organization that you uh, maybe not, maybe you don't have the capacity to give at a certain level or to recruit others to give at a certain level. You know, if you're earlier in your career and your colleagues and peers are also earlier in their career and not uh, at, a, at a really powerful giving level yet. Uh, but there are other things that you bring to the table, whether that's a um, you know, set of networks, uh, you know, maybe new audience insight that you have as a, as a younger professional that might be valuable to uh, smaller organizations. That, that larger organizations might not uh, be able to see the value in. Uh, so I think it's really about fit, and if you can find the right organization uh, that does value your expertise, and uh, you, you should determine what you have to bring to the table, and, and you should be able to give at a, uh, not at a certain uh, minimum level, but you should be prepared wherever you are in your career to give of your time and, and of your financial resources to the extent that you're able. I think one of the keys to finding the right organization uh, that is a good fit for you, and that fit has to go both ways. You know, you have to be right for the organization, but the organization also has to be right for you. Is to leverage your own personal networks, and uh, you know, you may have um, friends that serve on board members, uh, but if you're earlier in your career, that may be a generation earlier than you. That could be uh, your parents, your professors, your employers. Uh, almost anyone is going to have, uh, you know, even if it's one step removed a set of networks that, uh, networks, people in networks that do serve on boards. And that's a great place to start. Even if they're not of your same uh, generation and professional experience, uh, they're gonna have a lot of insight. Obviously they were younger and less experienced at one point as well. So that's one of the first places and best resources I would, I would go to in, in your network or to find uh, a different, you know, a link to a different network to find people who do serve on boards. How did they uh, come to serve on their boards? How did they find the right organization? Uh, what, did they, what do they see now as, as uh, essential for, for membership on boards? So once you're serving as a, as a volunteer at an organization or have become a member and, and later a volunteer, I think you want to think about the, the steps uh, that you can take with the organization that might ultimately lead to serving as a board member if that's your goal. And it's perfectly reasonable to, to make your, uh, your end goal explicit with uh, the executive director, uh, with board members, um, and, and let them know that that's something you're interested in uh, you know, later on down the road. And you'll have to judge for yourself whether it's the most savvy thing you know, very early in, in your relationship with an organization uh, to do that. You, know, you may want to hold back a little bit. You know, it, it may seem overly ambitious or overly eager early on, but you just have to get a feel with that with each organization. But I think it's important to, to, to do a couple things. Uh, when you think it's appropriate and you've got the right relationship with either an executive director or board member or, or both, uh, to let them know that you're interested in increasing levels of responsibility as a volunteer. Uh, you're not just interested in showing up to put in a couple hours on a Saturday. You know, that's a, a, certainly a great need and they have lots of volunteers that do that. Uh, and do that for 30 years. It's, it's certainly important, just as you would think about in your day job if you're interested in advancement and increasing levels of responsibility, uh, to do a couple things. Make sure that you are in a position to um, be in a volunteer opportunity where you can contribute more to the organization and where that contribution can be recognized, not so much recognized publicly, but with the, the people that you're interested in, in influencing, frankly, in the organization again, the executive director, board members, as appropriate, where they can see uh, in the contribution that you make to the organization that you have some skills and competencies and, and uh, things that you can bring to the table uh, that they will be able to look back on you know, in a couple of years or whatever the interval is down the road when, when board membership might be appropriate to see that you know, that person really stepped up as a leader of that committee. Uh, you know, even though they weren't the chair, they really took on um, and, and showed some initiative. You know, that will serve you well for obvious reasons. And I think once you ha do have a, I think it's important to, to get an ally as well, you know, to, to once you have a relationship with an executive director or, or, or board member, uh, to, to work with them, and especially someone who's been at the organization for a while, 
it's probably a good idea to to ask them what the board looks what the organization looks for in a board member uh, be open that there may be things that uh, you know you need to develop either competencies or abilities capacities etc uh, that, that stand between you and, and board membership at this point uh, but if you can find an ally, find a mentor, if it's an organization you're really committed to, I think that's a, a good idea as well. But just like in your day job, the best thing you can do is, is ensure that you're in a position where the contributions that you do make uh, are, or rather that you're in a position to make a substantial contribution and, and, and um, you know, that will, even if it's not noticed at first, that will over time uh, serve you well and, and show your com both your commitment and your capacity to, to give to the organization and, and not just in a financial sense. If you haven't found an organization that is the right fit for you, while you should be persistent in, in looking for new organizations and expanding your networks uh, to identify opportunities, it might also be worth re-examining periodically if this is the right time for you to join a board. Uh, if you meet with one or two or three organizations and none of them turn out to be the right fit, uh, it might just be that you haven't found the right one yet. Um, but it also might be uh, that, that you you've met with three savvy experienced boards who see uh, potential in you but that don't see that that you're there yet or that you have the right mix of things for uh, for their for their organization and of course there is no shame in that uh, at all and, and that's worth re-examining periodically I think if you haven't met with success in your goal uh, you should keep plugging away but it's also worth uh, discussing candidly with yourself, uh, but also with a trusted advisor, whoever that might be, you know, if this is the right time. And, and the answer may be yes, and you keep doing what you're doing. Uh, but the answer also might be, there are some things that, uh, I, some capacities I need to develop or some additional skills or experience that, that I just don't have yet at this point in my career. And this may not be a realistic goal, and, and I'm gonna keep working on building those, building those networks, adding to my skills and experience that, that will make me a more valuable potential board member.